And that's Bob Groats, who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb Show. Bob, thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? Hey, Zach. How you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, and I appreciate a few minutes. So before we talk about the Eagles, I just saw that Mike Tavares uh, plans not to stand up and support Colin Kaepernick. Mike uh, is a player on the Philadelphia Eagles right now, for people that don't know. I'm just wondering, with what happened over the weekend, you've been doing this for a long time. What was your reaction to the stance that Colin Kaepernick took? Well, I didn't I, I didn't think it was like I, I kind of agreed with Malcolm Jenkins at the beginning. Like he he turned the focus onto himself. However, he has that he does have the right and I don't think people I, I think people say, Well, we had the right to say that he's he's not right and all that stuff and you just get back and forth. But you know, you definitely have that right. And if he wants to make that kind of a statement, I don't know why you you can't. I don't know why there would be so much outrage about it. I don't think he meant it as a as a attack on the military. Um, however, I can understand that policemen are upset about that because that's what it seems to be um, centered around a little bit. At least that's what it seems like. He was kind of vague about you know what uh, there's bodies in the streets and all that stuff. So. I don't, you know, if I was a policeman, I, won't, I guess I wouldn't be real happy about it. But uh, but let, let's be real about the whole thing. He does have a right to, to exercise his expression. And, uh, and whether he's a professional football player or, you know, whether he hasn't even made a team like this guy on the Eagles. Um, and, and I'm kind of curious. I wasn't around when he said that. I think he said that only to ESPN. Uh, yes. But, uh, yeah, but – he doesn't. I don't think he's got much of a shot of making the team, but he has that same right to to do what he wants. If he doesn't want to stand up for the national anthem, you know that's his uh, that's his right. And uh, and I do see other people, you know, joining in in on this. I was talking to Malcolm Jenkins today, and um, right now he doesn't have plans to um, to exercise or to uh, express himself that way. But uh, you know, there's there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, feeling among. Um, some of these players on the Eagles, I know that um, you know they're they're really upset that um, when they when they look at you know they see read the headlines and stuff and and um, and they see like uh, uh, I guess the the way to put it would be people of color when they see that they've been um, shot or you know and they don't know nobody really knows what the circumstances are they're they're really concerned about that so. So it definitely, you know, it's a it's a real issue to them, but there's just no question about it, and uh, and I don't think it's going away. I think it, I, I think that this, uh, I think that there will be other people that join this protest. Yeah, it would not surprise me, especially what you saw with uh, some of the NBA players say at the ESPY, and I think there's other ways that Colin Kaepernick could go about it. Maybe have an, an open forum with the police department uh, somewhere in San Francisco. Me personally, I think you should stand up for the national anthem, but you're right. You do have the right not to stand up if you elect not to do so, but I also think uh, another issue that you see here in this matter is it's a two-way street. What's going on in our world right now is is very scary. Uh, it's not good what's going on in our society, but also in one aspect, yes, cops should not be killing innocent people, but also there shouldn't be people that are killing innocent cops as well. I think that's something that Colin Kaepernick needs to talk about more, it being a two-way street. Yeah, and you know, and I've heard people say, if you don't like it, you know, why don't you go somewhere else? And uh, that that's really not the point here, uh, because that just dismisses completely the the freedoms that we have in our, our country. So, I I don't know what the answer is. Um, if it was, I don't even know what I would do if it was me. I mean, I, I think it, you know, if, if I put myself in his position, if I felt that strongly about something, would I do that? I don't know. So. So I, I think there's a part of me that says, well, it takes a lot of courage to do that because he, in, in so many ways, the, the criticism has shown that if you, you take a firm stand like that, um, whether, whether it's some people think it's appropriate or not, I mean, you're going to be, a, you're going to end up being a pariah. So, I mean, and he says he's, he, he, he knows what, what he's doing. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, they, it, it, it's just a really, it's a it's a difficult situation and um and and another thing too the people that were you know the body that's not really being represented here that's really taking another bashing uh, in my opinion are, are the police and uh and there's some really good police and you know there's some that you know 
Uh, well, you know, there there've been stories about police that some that haven't, you know, that that aren't doing what they were they were supposed to be doing. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is not going to go away for sure. And uh, you know, I, I I'd hate to, you know, I, I just hate to see pro football turn into a game where you're counting how many guys are standing up for the national anthem and how many aren't. Yeah, and also one other thing. Imagine if Kaepernick, and they may not cut him because of this reason. They may cut him because his skills over the years since that Super Bowl appearance have diminished. But imagine knowing who the head coach is in Chip Kelly and he kept Riley Cooper in Philadelphia. Imagine how that would be perceived if he then went and cut Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that, that was always going to be a, a strange situation. Um, and that's going to follow Chip wherever he goes. Uh, you know, no matter what the reason was for doing it, but um, th- this whole that that whole thing about uh, you know about Kaepernick and, and uh, whether this could affect, I, I don't think this really would have a bearing on whether it would affect whether he he stays with the team I or agree. not. I really don't. Yeah, I, I think um, I think there's going to be other things said, and you know, quite frankly, sometimes I wonder if he if he really wants to play anymore. He wouldn't be the first guy that that had had enough of football after a few years. Uh, so that that wouldn't surprise me, but um, yeah, I, I think that um, I, 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 as I was saying, I don't know what the answer is. I I'd like to see something more concrete than just you know just um, and I say just and instead of like that, what some people I, I hate to be insulting people, one body of people to get my point across, but uh, but you know maybe I just don't feel you know that maybe I don't feel that strongly about something that I would want to do something like that. Bob Groth joins us right now. So let's get to the Eagles. Very successful preseason game number three. Just like last year, Sam Bradford has a knack for playing well uh, in those preseason game number three. But uh, how have your expectations, have they changed over the weekend with what you saw out of the Eagles offense? Well, actually, it changed when uh, Tony Romo got hurt again after three plays. So it's almost like you got to give the Eagles two more wins this year because they <laughs> they get them early. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing that, you know, three plays. And um, I, I just don't know what – and I don't think that Prescott is going to be able to, to be uh, nearly as effective in um, the regular season when teams aren't game planning as in the regular season. Although I will say that the, the Cowboys offense with that uh, – with that big offensive line, one of the best, if not the best in football, and, and what they want to do, run the ball. If you're going to have to start a rookie, that's the offense you want to do it in. So, But I still think that's going to be too much of a hurdle for them to overcome. And, and, and the other thing is that offense, Zach, they, you know, they, the defense relies on that offense to uh, keep them in the game. I mean, it just they, they don't tackle well. They, there's a lot of holes. They've had, they have some suspensions on that defense to start the season, the Cowboys. And then uh, the Eagles, I, I, I liked what Sam Bradford did. I liked what his receivers did. But to, to put that in, and just to frame it a little bit more, the, the Colts, their, their defense is, is really not that good, and they were missing six cornerbacks. So you have to kind of, like, preface any praise with, uh, well, this remember, this was the situation. Take but, it with uh, a grain of salt, did, yeah. Yeah, they, they did move the ball effectively. Uh, Bradford, is, you know, he's, he's still an accurate guy. The offensive line protected well, so uh, all, you know all of those things are real positive. And um, and the other thing that the what I've seen throughout this preseason with the Eagles, they uh, they don't make the bad mistake, the turnovers, and that has been an issue the last the previous two seasons. The turnovers are way down. And and Zach, we all know like if you limit the turnovers and you have a defense that can produce turnovers. And it looks like the Eagles are going to be able to generate a lot of pressure up front. And you have solid special teams. You're in. You're in. You're at least competitive in almost every game. And that could be enough this year in the NFC East. I just don't see enough talent on this offense for them to win the NFC East. Before uh, the weekend, I had the Giants won, the Redskins two, uh, Cowboys three, and the Eagles four. So maybe you could flip flop now the Eagles and the Cowboys. But I think that concern uh, in the wide receiver position, especially, uh, is a big concern. Yes, you saw some positive with Doriel Green Beckham over the weekend. Aguilar, uh, I think he's playing scared right now. But then they also cut Givens and Randall. Uh, that wide receiver position, though, Bob, it's a big concern for me still yeah there, there's nobody there that scares anybody i don't think um it, it would it's almost like you have a bunch of possession receivers and uh 
And Nelson Aguilar, for whatever reason, there's always there's always a good play followed by you know a, a bonehead play where it results in a turnover or something. So I, I don't know what um, you know. I I don't think he's in trouble. He's in danger of being cut, but uh, I don't I don't see him as the answer as an answer either. The only real difference maker on this team, Zach, the only guy that the the only real guy that you have to game plan for is Fletcher Cox and. Uh, so, yeah, that offense, is it going to be hard for them to score points? I absolutely think it will. Is Aguilar, is he playing scared? Because when he drops a wide-open pass or it hits off his hands and goes for an interception, you just have to think maybe the guy's scared of getting hit, and that's why he's dropping all these balls. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about that. But uh, but there is – I don't know if it's, like, focus. and I think it's it probably more focus and concentration. and uh, But uh, – you know, clearly he's not looking like um, a first-round talent, and uh, and you know even even his speed, Zach. I mean, he was supposed to be at some point. He was supposed to play a, be playing a lot. I mean, he should be playing a lot faster, in my opinion. They, they even at one point they even thought that he could be a deep threat, and I've not seen that. I, I've seen uh, he, he's he looks more like a slot receiver, like not even a real fast guy, and. Uh, and more, maybe even more of a possession guy. So I, I don't know exactly. I don't think it's a change in the offense. Um, he had some off the field. He had an off the field issue. I don't know that that. I don't think that's a factor. I, I just I don't. I can't explain this. I mean, it just uh, maybe he he's not the guy. Just not the guy that they thought he was when they selected him in the first round last year. With Givens and Randall, were you surprised that they got cut this early? No, not with Randall. I. He he had a few. He had like a good half of a, a week at training camp, and then he just disappeared. And I and I kept reading all these people and their uh, their perspectives about who was going to make the team at wide receiver. And I didn't buy Randall making it for a minute. Uh, it just he he could play special teams if they wanted him to. I, I just didn't think he was really interested in playing for the Eagles. I, I had a. I did not have a good vibe about him at all. After maybe, say, like the first week of practice, he did look smooth. And then after that, I don't know what, what happened. I, it just looked like he, you know, it looked like he didn't want to be there. And so, and um, with Gibbons, he didn't do anything until the, really until the last preseason game. And I, I thought he was good in that last preseason game. But again, you know, all the cornerbacks for the, the Colts were, were either hurt or missing. So um, and what kind of a, evaluation process that was uh, I don't think it was nearly enough so it didn't I wasn't surprised and uh, and also these young guys they're uh, they're eager to, to play special teams and then that's what they're going to be needing them to do I'll tell you one player I was impressed with over the weekend on offense was Josh Huff I love that jet sweep play I, I actually thought over the weekend that Doug Peterson called a really good game though uh, the other night Bob I like what he did with Huff yeah, and and believe me, they if they don't put plays in like that for people unless they're going to keep them. So, and he was another guy that people thought Josh Huff that you know maybe he was on the bubble, but uh, I didn't see it because they they run a variety of plays. He also is a big special teams contributor. He can he can uh, return kickoffs. So yeah, he he really helped himself, and uh, and I think that um, you know that just just that type of work ethic I think is is going to I mean his job I believe is going to be safe this year wrapping up with Bob Groats who joins us right now on the Zach Gelb show Fox Sports 920 the jersey does a tremendous job covering the Eagles for the Delaware County Daily Times uh, let's get to that defense I do think it's going to be a very good defense this year I like the brand that Jim Schwartz does preach uh, some concerns at corners but you even said it, that uh, Colts team is not that good. Uh, the offensive line didn't look too hot the other night, and that's a team that hasn't provided luck with a lot of weapons over the years. And when they played Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, you didn't see Big Ben, you didn't see Antonio Brown or Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, I do think this defense is going to be good, but how good do you think they can be, especially since we haven't seen them go against a legitimate offense so far uh, in the preseason? Yeah, and we haven't seen uh, the cornerbacks tested, and and that's where um, I think their biggest issues are going to be this year. So, but uh, if that pass rush, if they get to the if they get to the opposing quarterback, that's going to make the uh, the cornerbacks the, the inexperienced at quarterbacks and the and uh, the dearth of talent there. It's going to make that that position better. 
So um, I, I think that's that's what Eagle fans have to hope for is that the the defensive line really brings it. And let's but let's face it too. There's a lot of talent there. Um, I think they're going to be able to if they don't keep all those defensive linemen, they're going to be and they're they're unable to to trade the guys they don't want to keep. Um, there's going to be guys that are claimed by other teams after the cut. So I, I like a lot of those guys there. I like the push that they're getting. Um, and I, I met, I was speaking with, uh, Bo Allen today and, uh, he's, he's, uh, was a nose tackle in the old defense and a regular, just a regular tackle in the four, three. And I, I, I don't know if you noticed it, Zach, but, um, uh, this Eagles defensive line, when they come off the ball, they're, you they're can quick. hear the shoulder. Yeah. And you can hear the shoulder pads and the helmets cracking. I mean, it's like an explosion. And I'm not saying that that didn't happen. Yeah, you know, last year or the year before that, but it was different. And uh, and Bo Allen says he 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 kind of agrees. He he thinks it's different too. They were more of a read and react type of defense. So this is a defense that is going to come attack you, get right off the ball, and I think that's really going to help. And uh, you know, hopefully that the linebackers will be able to hold up there. I think that's going to be another issue right there too. The the linebackers they they have to stay healthy, and I don't. I don't think you have guys there that have, have shown that they can stay healthy, except for, uh, you know, maybe Tullock, the rest of those guys. So I think that's another pro- uh, potential problem area, linebacker, linebacker and cornerbacks. But uh, if that front line, if they, if they get pressure, um, I think that's going to, that's more than half the battle for this defense. Yeah, and they have depth of that position, like you were saying, and you saw that bull rush by Bo Allen on uh, Saturday night. So you're exactly right. But, Bob, you do a tremendous job covering the Eagles for a very long time. We appreciate the time today on the Zach Gelb Show. Thanks so much. All right. Hey, thanks, Zach.